Hello, welcome to the second part of this video. And in this in this part, we are going to discuss the uh, radiation pattern gain and polarization. Let's begin. So radiation pattern. So what is radiation pattern? So the radiation pattern of antenna is a representation or pictorial or mathematical uh, of the distribution of power outflowing. Let me for a let me we are looking at a let me just show you the picture. So this is a radiation pattern. Right? So this is a three-dimensional radiation pattern. So if we have an antenna, then how the power is distributed in a 3D coordinate system? If the antenna is at the center, then how the power is distributed like this? Right? So this is what a radiation pattern is. So this is a mathematical function, or you can say that um, we represent we can represent it as a function of theta and phi. So if you know the uh, theory of polar coordinate system, uh, sorry, not polar. Uh, it is the spherical coordinate system so if you uh, remember the theory of spherical coordinate system then in spherical coordinate system uh, we have the parameters r theta and phi and uh, a uh, a 3d radiation pattern is actually we consider the far field so in this case since we are considering far field so the r is much much larger than the uh, wavelength or r is much much larger than the size of the antenna itself so what we can say is that uh, this radiation pattern is at r equal to infinity so if r equal to infinity we have only two parameters left uh, theta and phi so this is if these are the axis like this is the x axis this is the y axis and this is the z axis then this angle is called phi and this angle is called theta so we represent the power distribution as a function of theta and phi so then we get a like three dimensional mathematical function or it is a pictorial representation like this so this is what is said here so if it is a uh, transmit antenna then we said that the power is distributed in this manner that means power is distributed the power will be equally equal distributed along these directions and it will be less here and less at the bottom bottom so if it is a receive antenna then we can say that this is the receive power density that means the power the, the radiation coming in these directions will be received with maximum gain and the uh, um, power which is coming in this direction will be received with minimum gain so this is all about a radiation pattern so this is pattern so for a transmit antenna it is the outflowing power and if it is a uh, receiving antenna then it is a inflowing power to the antenna uh, so this is all about the radiation pattern so so power pattern versus field pattern so there are two types of pattern uh, this can be either a radiation power that means how much power is radiated in these directions or it can be what is the field intensity either electric field or magnetic field intensity because we know that uh, a radiation is nothing but um, the um, electromagnetic wave where there is a uh, electric field and a magnetic field so we can represent this in terms of either the fields or we can represent it in terms of the radiated power so the power pattern is the is the measured or calculated um, and plotted received power that means p theta you see here p is a function of theta and phi and this is modulus we take modulus because um, because actually power is a complex power in this case so we take the absolute value of the complex power at constant large distance so at constant large distance so we are assuming that the distance is almost infinity it is very very large compared to the wavelength or compared to the size of the antenna itself so the amplitude field pattern is the uh, measured or calculated and plotted electric field or magnetic field it's either electric field or magnetic field either e theta comma phi or h theta, theta comma phi and both can be used and both uh, will have almost the same phase because you can see the power is related to the e square or h square so we get almost the same thing uh, it makes no difference but uh, this is how like it works uh, then we come to normalized pattern so usually the pattern described the normalized field values so actually what happens we this we represent for the simplicity of representation we normalize the whole thing so we this, this is the maximum power is considered to be 0 db and the minimum power is minus infinity so this is the this is the uh, normalization so the maximum power will be 0 db minimum power will be the minimum one so the it is ideally it can be go to go up to minus infinity but it has some finite value very very small so the main advantage of normalizing is that um, suppose we have two separate antennas and one may be having some very high gain 
and other may be having very low gain so in that case comparing the two patterns pictorially or mathematically may be complex so we so we normalize the patterns so that the shape of the pattern or the size or the maximum value of the pattern uh, remains somewhat same and this helps us in comparing the radiation patterns so the antenna radiation pattern is 3d three dimensional uh, the 3d plot of antenna pattern assumes both angles theta and phi varying which is difficult to produce and to interpret so you can see there is a problem here because it is a three dimensional problem and we cannot see the back of this right because if we uh, plot it on a paper then we cannot see the back and we cannot like have a full view of the 3d object on a 2d paper so there is another option which is called the 2d pattern so in 2d pattern what will happen we only take two normalized plans either the digital this is the x-axis so either we take this plan x plan or we take the y plan we take two cuts and these two cuts are called like this so this is called the azimuth plan and this is called the elevation plan so just like you know that azimuth means it is the uh, it is the surrounding and elevation is the up and down so what happens instead of this whole three dimensional plane we represent a smaller plan uh, or two, uh, two, one, two two dimensional plans one is the azimuthal plan and one is elevation plan and it is more convenient for us to uh, look at these 2d pictures than the 3d pictures and uh, we can plot them in a paper in a more convenient way so usually the antenna pattern is presented as a 2d plot uh, with only one of the uh, direction angles theta or phi varies so it is the it is an intersection of the 3d one with a given plane so either the EP, either the azimuthal plan or the elevation plan so it is shown here this is a 2d plan of the elevation plan phi equal to constant so you can see here here phi equal to constant and theta is changing so the next is principal pattern so principal pattern are 2d patterns of linearly polarized antennas so we will discuss what is linearly polarized antenna but for now let, let us assume that this is some kind of antenna so it has uh, okay so measured in two two planes the e plane and h plane so see here we have seen two planes one is the azimuth plane one is the elevation plane but here we are seeing two other planes e plane and h plane now see what is a very clear concept so if because we know that uh, if the antenna radiation is in one direction then the e field and the h field right there will be one e field and one h field now if e field is in the azimuth plane then the azimuth plane will be called the e field the e, e plane sorry Let, this is an example so this is the wave right and you see here uh, suppose this is the axis this is the y axis and this is the z axis and the wave is propagating in the x direction right now you see here the e field is in the z direction and h field in, is in the y direction so we can say that since E field is in the z direction, this this plan, that means the z plan, the z plan is called E field is in the z direction, so this will be the xz plan. Xz plan will be the xz plan because you can see, you can, I think you can visualize this. So e, e field is in the z direction, the yellow one in the z direction. So if we have a uh, if we have a uh, shape like this, so if we have the x and Z, z plan x and z plan so that plan is called the e plan and this plan the h field is in the y direction so we can say that the, this plan the x z plan is the so x y plan is in the h plan so um, let me give you some picture I hope that I'll get some better better picture. So here you can see this is an antenna. This is actually a patch antenna, but you can see here this is the E plan, and the red one is the E plan and the H plan. So basically, the direction in which the E field is exists. Or oh, this is a better picture. You can see. So this is the antenna. You can see. So the e is in this direct this plane e is in this plane so we can we say that 
this is the e plane and h is in the perpendicular plane so we can say that this is the h plane so i think this picture is quite uh, clear e plane and h plane so sometimes we represent in e plane and h plane it is more convenient in some kind of antennas then we have the antenna mask so what is the antenna mask so if it is a directional antenna right if it is a directional antenna then what happens the antenna is suppose this is a directional antenna so this receives power at only one particular one particular frequency right sorry one particular angle and you can see this one particular angle and you can see that mm, this for example this antenna so here the gain is very very small here the gain is very very small and suddenly from 60 degree onwards it starts to increase and at 0 degree the gain is maximum and the gain again reduces as 60 degree so sorry, sorry from minus 60 degree to 60 degree it has a gain and at all other angles it has no gain so by looking at this you can see from around so if we draw a line here so this is 60 degree 60 degree so if you make a full circle from minus 180 degree to 180 degree then we know that this is a uh, directional antenna so there is no question of looking at the back side but if we just look at the front side or the direction of the measure globe we can say that the as we in from minus 180 degree to 180 degree as we increase we can see that uh, at only a particular angle we have the gain and this is called the antenna mask so this is another mask uh, which is in three dimensional so this time it was like increasing very sharply but this is another example of mask so so mask is another form of radiation pattern for directional antennas so this is another antenna you can see here this is the radiation pattern right and by looking at this we can say that this is the mask um, again there is something called cross polar so i am not going to enter the details of this copolar and cross polar i will explain in the in a short uh, in one of the next slides so you can see 0 db and minus 3 db so this is the because we know that minus 3 db corresponds to the half power and this is the half power and so this is how we represent the radiation pattern of the antenna by antenna masks then there is something called isotropic antenna so isotropic antenna is a hypothetical or a theoretical antenna uh, which uh, radiates equally in all directions so even uh, in in physics you have studied about uh, isotropic source a source a point source which uh, emits equal energy in all directions so that is the same thing um, the isotropic antenna or isotropic radiator is a hypothetical concept uh, used as a useful reference to describe BL antennas isotropic antennas radiate equally in all directions uh, its radiation pattern is represented by a sphere whose center is considered to be the iso um, consider considered whose center coincides uh, with the location of the isotropic radiator so just like a point source so directional antenna directional antenna is an antenna which radiates or receives much more power in one um, that means you can read like this a directional antenna is an antenna which di radiates much more power in some direction than in others or you can read like this a directional antenna is an antenna which receives more much more power in power in some direction than other so the antenna we know that the antenna can be either used for transmission or for reception so this is a pure this is a completely uh, this is a commonly used um, method for writing sentences like this so note usually uh, this term is applied to antennas whose directivity is much higher than that of the half wavelength dipole so we will discuss what is directivity then there is something called omni directional antenna so an antenna uh, which has a non radio non directional pattern in a plane so if for example you can see here this and this antenna that we studied a few minutes ago so this antenna you can see this antenna throughout this throughout this plane throughout this if this is x then throughout the xy plane it has a uniform power right throughout the xy plane it has a uniform power in just one plane it is it has uniform power in all directions so this kind of antennas are called omnidirectional antennas so don't don't confuse between isotropic antenna and omnidirectional antenna 
बिकॉज आइसोट्रोपिक एंटेनाज ट्रांसमिट सेम पावर इन ऑल डायरेक्शन इन ऑल द प्लांट्स बट इन ओमनी डायरेक्शनल एंटेना इट ट्रांसमिट और रिसीव सेम पावर इन ऑल डायरेक्शन इन जस्ट वन प्लान देन देर इज पैटर्न लोब्स सो देर इज लोब्स रेडिएशन पैटर्न यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज ए कॉमन वे ऑफ शोइंग द रेडिएशन पैटर्न यू कैन सी दिस दिस इज द पैटर्न राइट see this is the pattern in which the direction is maximum and this is called the major lobe right and these lobes are called the side lobes or minor lobes maximum power is in this direction but there will be some small amount of power in all the directions in all the directions so this is called the major lobe and this is called the minor lobes or and the side of the major lobe this actually side lobe or my side lobe minor lobe back lobe these are all similar things just the name is different everything other than the major lobe are called minor lobes and the minor lobes which are in the side are called side lobes the minor lobes which are in the back side are called back lobes and so on now there are two ways of representing the beam width beam width means the width of the beam uh, one is called a half power beam width so if we look at this if we let's say we represent this whole picture in a two dimensional form so you can see here this is the angle from uh, theta and this is the radiation power now see this is the major lobe this is the side lobes and this is the back lobe here it is from minus pi to pi um, the minus sign is not given but you can you, you can take this minus pi minus pi by 2 zero pi by uh, pi by 2 pi so this is again a directional antenna so you see here this is the back lobe this is back lobe this is the side lobe these are minor lobes these are all minor lobes and if you look at this this is the major lobe now what is the width of the major lobe that is called the beam width remember beam width and band width are not the same you have studied about band width in filters but in antenna we have something called beam width beam width means what is the width of this major lobe now there are two ways of representing this suppose this is the 0 db point because we are already we are always talk about normalized radiation patterns so if it is normalized radiation pattern this is the 0 db point and this is the minus 3 db point and we know that the power is half at the minus 3 db point so if we take the width of the lobe at the minus 3 db point then this is called the hp bw or half power beam width half power beam width and if we take this point these points are called nulls this is a null this is a null 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 so whenever there this is a dip it reduces to zero then we say that this is null right if it reduces to very small value we say that these are nulls so this is the first null in the positive direction and this is the first null in the negative direction now if we take the width between the two nulls this is the first null and this is the first null in two directions so then this is called the first null beam width or f and bw so these two are so a beam width can be said to be either the high power beam width or hp bw or f and bw the first null beam width these are the two ways of representing the beam width so half power beam the definition is given here half power beam width is the angle between the two factors uh, from the pattern's origin to the point of major lobe where the radiation intensity is half of its maximum which is the 3 db minus 3 db the first null beam width is the angle between two factors originating at the pattern's origin and ten and tangent to the main beam at its base so often we have the first null beam width is almost double of the twice of half power beam width so as you can see here this fn bw is almost double of this not always but often roughly equal to double in this picture it is not not double but many times we in many internet it, it happens that this is almost double this is another picture which shows the half power beam width and first null beam width and in this case we can see that this is almost double this angle is almost half of this angle in a 3d form you can see this this is the main lobe uh, this is the half power beam half power point and this is shown in absolute term not in db term so that's why it is 1 and 0.5 so if it is db term then it is 0 and minus 3 so there are various ways of representing these things then this is an isotropic source so what happens an isotropic source sorry an isotropic source 
So what is an anisotropic source? So every real antenna radiates more energy in some direction than in the other direction. So as you can say, this is actually a 3D, 3D end. You can imagine that this is a 3D sphere. And this point is the center of the sphere. And this point is a, like, like we have a uh, circle on the sphere. You can imagine that there is a circle in the sphere. And this is the angle. This is called solid angle actually. So we will discuss it. So every real antenna radiates more energy in some direction than in others. That is, has directional properties. Idealist example of directional antenna uh, the radiated energy is concentrated in the yellow region. So you can see this yellow region is the radiation energy is concentrated. Directive antenna gain. Directive antenna gain. The power flux density is increased by roughly the inverse ratio of the yellow area and the total surface of the isotropic surface sphere. So this is a bit complex. Let me explain in details. So what happens if this area? You can imagine we have some fixed amount of power. We have some fixed amount of power, and we want to distribute it equally in all directions. So what will happen? All directions will get less power, right? Suppose we have one power. Okay, the mathematics is not here. So let me just show you. Okay, there is no. Uh, okay, this is the radiation power. Okay. I think these equations are there somewhere. So you can see here, suppose we have a power P. P. P is given by P R. P R means radius power. This is P in P in divided by Four by four pi r square. Okay. So this is what I wanted to say. P in P P r is given by P in divided. This is for isotropic antenna. Right. This is for isotropic antenna. Right. Isotropic antenna. So P r equal to P in by four pi r square. Now we know that the four pi r square is the area of a sphere. So if we have a sphere like this, sorry for the poor drawing because I don't have any. I'm using a mouse pointer, uh, the touchpad to draw this. So the so this is the sphere. So the area of the sphere is given by four pi r square, right? So p in is the power in input, right? P in is the power input, and that power is divided equally in all the areas because four pi r square is the area of a sphere. You know, so the p in divided by four pi r square is the and there will be one efficiency term actually. There will be one eta term, but we are just ignoring the eta term. But if the eta is, so we have to remove this. Okay. 
so if we have the eta term eta means efficiency then we can say that p in by 4 pi r so this is equally divided in all directions now this is the area right this is the area this whole thing is the area area now instead of a sphere if we have a small portion of the sphere like what this is this for small portion of the sphere right if we have a small portion of the sphere sphere then we can say that the pr will be divided by p in by that small area right now the a becomes small so since a becomes small so this pr will become high right pr if the denominator becomes small then this pr will become large so this is the reason why um, the the directional antenna will have a larger gain compared to this antenna you can see this antenna this small portion of the area so the directive antenna gain the power flux density is increased by roughly the inverse ratio of the yellow area so this we can say that this we can see that this we can say that pr r is inversely proportional to the area right so this is what it is said here so is inversely proportional to the area now comes the antenna gain measurement so how the antenna is gain so what is the reference antenna right and this is the measuring point so this reference antenna is the antenna this reference antenna is the antenna uh, which transmits the energy and the measuring equipment is the antenna so first of all what we do we transmit the power using a reference antenna and see how much antenna is received at the measuring equipment then we replace the reference antenna divide the actual antenna and again we see how much power is received here right so the p node is the power delivered to the reference antenna s node is the power received the same in both steps right p is the power delivered to the actual antenna and s is the power received so here it is uh, said that the measuring equipment is a So this is the same type. Right? We have the same measuring equipment. We have the same measuring equipment. This is the measuring equipment. This is also a measuring equipment. This is the same measuring equipment, right? So first of all, we use this reference antenna to re give power, and then we give the actual power. And when we use the de reference power, reference. Uh, so we have made sure that this S not is same. This is here also the S not is same. Here also the S is same because in this case we increase the power. Increased case that we increase the power. Increased case that we the power may be small or we change this power p not and p p we tune these two powers to make sure that the same power is received at the measuring equipment i hope you understood so we have the antenna the actually this antenna is powered by some other device right we have some other device that powers this antenna and here we can change the p not here we can change the p not and in this case also there will be some other device which is connected to this and here we change the p so by changing p and p not we have see, made sure that the s not in s not is same in both the cases now the antenna gain is given by p by p not where s equal to s not right p by p not so if we take the ratio of p by p not then we get the relative gain that means what is the gain of the antenna as compared to this antenna so the antenna gain z i and z d now if we say that our this reference antenna is an isotropic antenna although we cannot have an isotropic antenna in practice but theoretically we can actually compare this and or since isotropic antenna is purely theoretical concept so what will happen we can calculate this power p not we we don't need an isotropic antenna but if we know all the parameters then we can calculate the p not required to give the same power here so antenna gain z i and z d unless otherwise specified the gain refers to the direction of maximum radiation um, in the so normally we say that, that the gain is in the so normally we say that the gain is in this direction the gain is in this direction 
direction of the maximum radiation right this, this, this is the direction in which we consider the gain now gain is a dimensionless factor related to the power and usually expressed in decibels so since this is a ratio of two powers so this has to be dim dimensionless zi is the isotropic power gain the theoretical concept the reference antenna is an isotropic antenna now if the ratio uh, if the reference antenna is an isotropic antenna then we say that this is the isotropic gain and if the reference is a dipole antenna then we say that this is a dipole gain half of dipole gain so these are two methods for representing the the gain and another interesting thing uh, if our uh, gain is isotropic antenna if, if our gain is measured with reference to an isotropic antenna zi then in db we say that this is db i so if this is a, this this thing in this case we say that the gain is d dbi and in this case we say that gain is in d b dbd dbi and dbd so these are two methods for representing the gain so the isotropic uh, we have the uh, for isotropic the zbi the zi is zero because we know that this power if we have this a uh, if we have this p not by p so since our p and p not are same so this will be dbi dbi will be zero right because this, this will be one and log of one is zero so this becomes zero db then for half wave dipole it is two for helix it is 14 and for small this it is 16 for large this it is 45 so as you can see here the gain increases as we reduce for different antennas for helix the gain is 14 for small this it is 16 for large this it goes up to 45 but at the same time the beam which decreases for a isotropic radiator it is 360 by 360 for a half of dipole it is 360 by 120 this is theta and phi okay so which one is theta and which one is phi it depends upon how you place the antenna the helix it is 35 by 35 then small this it is 30 by 30 and 1 degree by 1 degree and so on but, but you can see the last the last this is a very small very small uh, this highly uh, directive it is a very small beam only 1 degree uh, size and it has a very high gain so this directly relates to this result P pr is inversely proportional to a as a becomes small then pr becomes high and this is the reason why we had such a huge this antenna in this case here i showed this this is as big as three football fields and this is so big because we need a very sharp pointing beam in one particular direction and that's why this is a large dish antenna i hope this is clear uh, so next point is antenna gain and effective area so one more thing that uh, i would like to say uh, actually what happens we sometimes represent the antenna with respect to an aperture antenna so in the last class we discussed an aperture antenna in the last class we discussed an aperture antenna uh, let's go back to that slide okay so this is an aperture antenna and here what happens we represent the power in terms of the we represented the power in terms of the area right in terms of the area and here also if we apply the same concept the power and area are related so from the gain and from the gain efficiency and all these radiation pattern so what we do is that we represent the power of this antenna as an effective area or we can represent this to the main idea is that to deliver the same amount of power what should be the size of an aperture if we replace the given antenna by an aperture antenna so the measure of the effective absorption area uh, presented by an antenna 
to be an incident plane wave. So depends upon the antenna gain and wavelength. So the aperture efficiency it is given by eta a equal to a e by a. So a is the actual area and a is the um, the effective area. So this is one terminology which is commonly used for representing the uh, like how big the antenna is. Right? Then the power transfer in free space. So power transfer in free space is given by P R equal to P F D that means power plus density into A E. So this is the reason why we need this analysis because we need to consider the effective area and not the actual area. So the P R is given by P F D into A E or effective area and from this we say that the gain into power divided by 4 pi r square uh, this is the equation of the P F D that we see Z T P T by 4 pi r square. So what is this P F D? So Z T into P T. Z T into P T is the gain of the transmit antenna and the power given to the transmit antenna. So you can see here. So if we give some power, that power will be multiplied by the gain. Right. Suppose we have an amplifier and an amplifier we give the power of say power of say 1 watt and we the gain of the antenna is say 2. So at the output we will have 2 watt. Right. Similarly, suppose the power given to the antenna is Pt and the gain of the antenna is Zt. So those two will be multiplied and the whole thing will be divided by the 4 pi r square. That means if we have an isotropic area antenna and we give this much of power and gain to an isotropic antenna, then what will be the power radiated at each direction of the isotropic antenna? And A is the effective area. So this is the this is the kind of mathematical formulation and I am not going to into details of the mathematical formulations and by using this kind of mathematical formulation we can compute the re receive power as pt zt zr by lambda by 4 by r whole square and this is a very important equation in antenna so pt is the transmit power zt is the gain, gain of the transmit antenna zr is the gain of the receive antenna and lambda by 4 pi r square so this term gives us the receive power so if we have a receive power what what will be the power received right you can calculate the receive power received at the distance r from the antenna using this equation if we know the transmitted power, if you know the gain of the transmitted antenna, if you know the gain of the receiving antenna, if you know the frequency or lambda and r, then using this equation, we can calculate the PR or the receive power of the antenna. So how much power will be received at the receiver? So this is the equation. And this is a very very important equation and this is not only in satellite communication but this is also in mobile communication. And in all kind of communication, this equation is very important. And this equation is the basis of your uh, basis of the uh, this equation is the basis of the um, link buzzer equation that we consider uh, in satellite communication. P R equal to P T Z T Z R lambda by four pi R whole square. So this is the most important equation in um, antenna. Then we have the something called effective isotropic radiated power sorry equivalent isotropic radiated power EIRP so EIRP is given by the P into ZI so this P and P and Z this P and ZI by combining this the product of the power supplied to the antenna and the antenna gain related to the isotropic antenna is given uh, in a given direction so if this ZT this ZT is that this gain so if this gain is a ZI that means this gain is uh, measured with respect to an isotropic antenna then what happens we can calculate this EIRP equal to P into ZI so this whole thing PTZT can be treated as an EIRP so we will see that uh, expression later now comes to polarization so you already know what is polarization so if we have an antenna uh, this, this is in the y direction the wave is propagating in the y direction and you can see uh, the here the red is the electric field and the blue is the magnetic field we say this is E and this is B. The B beam stands for magnetic field intensity and E stands for electric field intensity. So the red is the electric field and blue is the magnetic field. And we can see that we have a linear polarization. Linear polarization means the polarization is constant. The polarization is not changing. So in, in a linearly polarized plane wave, the direction of E and H factor is constant. Then we have something called elliptical polarization. So if Ex and Uy are changing with time, 
So if E x equal to cos omega t, E y equal to cos omega t, then we will get this kind of polarization. If E x equal to cos omega t and E y equal to cos omega t plus pi by 4, we will get this kind of polarization. So this is an example you can see. Uh, okay, there is a very good animation. Let me find. So you can see here, this is a linear polarization and in this case only the E field is shown, okay, the H field is not shown. If it is a linear polarization, it is not changing. If it is a circular polarization, it is changing like a circle. The E field, the direction of the E field is changing like a circle. It is changing with time. And if it is a elliptical polarization, it is changing like this. It is right-handed because the circle is moving in the right-hand direction or if it is left-handed, then it will be moving the opposite direction. This is another very good uh, example here. Okay, I will put the link of the I will put the description. So this is another video. You can see this is a linear polarization because it draws a line here. You see, you can see this this draws a line here. Now, if it is a circular polarization, so I will uh, 45 degrees. So this is a very nice video. Uh, I will share the link uh, in the description. So I, I will not show it here exactly, but I will put a link to this video in the description. You please watch that video. So the so this is all about polarization. Comments on polarization at any moment in the chosen reference point in space, there is actually a single electric factor E and associated magnetic factor E H. Uh, this is the result of superposition or addition of the instantaneous field. E and H produced by all radiation sources active at that moment. The separation of fields by their wavelength or polarization or direction is the result of field direction. So actually what happens this thing is a bit um, like why the polarization happens like why the polarization happens. So at any moment in a chosen reference point in space there is actually a single electric factor and at a given space time there is a single electric factor and a magnetic factor so this is the result of superposition so if we put all the field factors together so you can see here every point is just if we look at only one point let's this point then if we look at only one point right you know this is not moving the point itself is undergoing some superharmonic, some uh, simple harmonic motion at this point and the point itself is not moving anywhere. The point is here only, right. The point is here only and the superposition of all these points leads to the, leads to the polarization structure. So this is what is said here. So this is the superposition of all these things. So the last point says that the separation of fields by their wavelength, uh, polar uh, the wavelength polarization or direction is the result of filtration. Filtration. So what is filtration? So what happens? The field can be either separated by wavelength. So we know that. Uh, uh, see, let me explain you in a very uh, nice way. So see, we can separate the waves by first of all by the wavelength that means uh, one field may be at one frequency and the other field may be at other frequency right one wave is one frequency and the other wave is another frequency so these two will be separated and this is this is the basic concept of your uh, frequency division multiplexing or something like that uh, because we all using the same wireless frequency but uh, all the different service providers are working at different wavelengths so what happens there is no interference because all are using separate wavelengths. So this is the separation of field by wavelength. The second thing is separation of wavelength wave by polarization. So let me explain you in a very good example. So what happens if you use some old radio like the old amplitude modulated radio the AM radios. 
those used had those and those those uh, devices had a linear polarization so if you rotate the radio upside down then the tv will the radio will stop receiving the signal because that used this a different polarization or you can see that the polarization the in case of light we see that uh, we use a 3d uh, effect so 3d tv or 3d cinema uh, we use the polarized lenses or polarized glasses to see the 3d effect so that is the use of polarization that means the two waves may be present at the same time at the same frequency but they are with separate polarization so that will also result in filtration filtration then the third thing is direction that means we have we are using the same time we are using the same time same frequency same polarization but we are using two different direction antennas one antenna is in one direction and the other antenna is other direction so then also there will be a separation in direction and this is a very important concept in satellite communication because see two satellites may be using the same frequency maybe they are using the same polarization but the two antennas are directed in two different ways and we are catching two separate satellites right similarly two satellites may be in the same direction but we are using two separate polarizations to distinguish between one satellite to the other then the wavelength is the most common one so the this is very important concept for use of antennas in satellite communication next comes antenna polarization the polarization of an antenna is a in a specified di specific direction is defined by the pro polarization of the wave produced by the antenna at great distance at that direction so it is not a near field phenomena it is a far field phenomena so at a great distance from the antenna what is the orientation of the electric field the polarization efficiency the power received by an antenna from a particular direction is maximal if the polarization of the incident wave is the polarization of the antenna in the wave arrival of direction that means if the um, polarization of the antenna and the polarization of the incoming wave is same then we get maximum power so this is what i discussed here because if two antennas are oppositely polarized one is x polarized and one is y polarized then the two may be receiving signals from two different sources in the same direction maybe two different satellites two satellites are there both are using the same frequency same direction but one is using x polarized and one is using y polarized so the antenna which is oriented in the x polarized direction will receive the x polarized and signal and the antenna which is oriented in the y direction that will receive the y polarized signal so this is the orientation of antennas in mobile phones uh, we usually circular polarization is used so that even if you are sleeping or even if your phone is to tilted or inverted then also you receive the same same signal because in mobile phone we use circular polarization actually there are two separate antennas uh, in the base station uh, for each direction and the two separate antennas produces a, a, a circularly polarized wave then the polarization filters so this is the polarization filter actually so we have this kind of some uh, this is the same concept that you have studied in light or optics uh, we have this kind of structure which allows polarization of only one particular orientation to pass through it and it blocks the orientation other orientations so this is the polarization filters okay so with this we have completed the second part the radiation pattern uh, gain polarization so next is equivalent circuit radiation efficiency so we will discuss it in the next video so thank you